Research has shown that we can be up to 160% stronger during the eccentric motion of any given exercise. Could taking advantage of this concept allow one to assemble mounds of new strength and blast through plateaus? Oh well, that's exactly gosh. what I wanted to find out. So over the course of 10 days, I only train eccentrics. This is what happened, but you gotta focus. Day one starting with upper body eccentrics only. I thought it would be smart to begin this experiment with an exercise that would be easy to reset to the top position without activating concentrically for every rep. So starting with just my body weight, working on the slow negative or eccentric, but then stepping back up onto the machine to reset the rep. And then because me and most people are stronger on the eccentric or negative motion of the rep, I was able to bump up the weight quite quickly. However, for this first exercise on this first day, I tried to focus more on controlling the eccentric motion down slowly for added time under tension. At the top weight of an additional 90 pounds to my body weight, I only did three sets of five reps, but probably because they were so slow and controlled, I really felt the tension and strain on my triceps and chest. So if you didn't get it already, a concentric motion is where a muscle or muscle group is shortened or contracted. Now an eccentric motion is where the muscle or muscle group is lengthened. And because I am only trying to do eccentrics, I am trying to minimize the concentric motion of each exercise. Thus is why I'm looking like I belong on gym fails, jumping up to the top of the lat pull down to use my body weight to get into position, and then just working on the eccentric motion of controlling the lat pull down back up. Now, as you can guess, because I am stronger with the eccentric motion, I was able to bump up the weight quite a bit, but going beyond my body weight, I had to have a partner help me lower myself into position. Thank the Lord there were not too many bystanders. So yes, many of the exercises coming up in this video are gonna look absolutely ridiculous, but I had to put the ego aside because sometimes trying new things is the only way you can make new progress. And then off to bicep curls. Yes, that guy's swinging the weight like a maniac. That's me. Because, once again, I'm only focusing on the eccentric motion, or in this case, letting the weight back down. First bumping it up 10 pounds more than I normally curl, then bumping it up 20 pounds. I don't know, as ridiculous as this looks, there might be something a little secret here. In fact, looking at this one study, they found that eccentric training performed at high intensities was shown to be more effective at promoting increases in muscle mass, measured in muscle girth. Could this mean my arms are finally gonna grow by the end of this challenge? Actually, maybe. However, when moving over to the tricep pushdown, it was quite harder to get into the top position of this movement in order to just work eccentrically. So doing my best, I did four sets of eight reps. Once again, trying to work on the slow and negative motion only. Finishing up with grip assisting with my leg to close the gripper and then just focusing on releasing the gripper slowly and controlled to yes, work that eccentric motion of the hand, forearm, etc. With all this exertion, you would think I would be getting exhausted during my workout. But to my surprise, even after an hour of being in the gym, I was feeling quite amped up. Yeah, I feel amped. I thought I would feel exhausted and like tired right now, but I'm just like, like amped. But that was short lived. Oh. I'll be all right, I'll be all right, I'll be all right, I'll be all right. I'm so sore right here and right here. I wanna maximize the amount of effort I put into my legs, so I'm gonna to take today off actually, try to just recover my central nervous system, and then leg day tomorrow. Still a little sore in the upper body, but you know what, enough is enough. It is time to hit legs. <laughs> I started with squats, and I was really hoping to challenge myself because squats are one of my very weak points. Oh gosh. Setting up the safety straps to catch the barbell right at the bottom of the squat. Boom. So that I only had to focus on the controlled eccentric motion on the way down. I started relatively light with just 95 pounds for a few reps. But then I bumped the weight up, and I was hoping this is where the magic was going to be made. 
Unfortunately, when bumping the weight up, it became increasingly more annoying to get the weight re-racked without being too concentric. So literally taking all of the weights off and then putting all of the weights back on for every rep. <sighs> this is going to be fatiguing and time consuming, just resetting up the weight. But because stronger in the eccentric motion, I was able to bump the weight up quite a bit. These should be rated for a thousand pounds, so this should be nothing. And there's something about adding more weight to the squat than you're used to, even if you're only doing the eccentrics, that's quite intimidating but I tried to control the weight down the best I could to hopefully make that progress throughout this experiment. Oh, oh right there, it just like goes. Let's try that again. So I was finding right at the bottom of my squat was where I was letting out with this heavier weight. Oh my gosh. Yo, thank God for these. Seriously, I would not be doing this at all if I did not have safety straps. Oh man, I feel it. I feel this weight. Could this additional weight that I'm not used to just letting it down be shocking my body into getting stronger? That's the idea. Oh. And that's what we're gonna find out. To be honest with you, as big as my ego is getting, which is like this big right now, I, I feel like I'm missing out on a very critical part of the squat where I'm extremely weak, which is right before 90 degrees. So I'm actually gonna back the weight down and try to focus on that last little quarter of a rep. Right here is where I like lose it, so I need to just really focus on controlling it right there. So bringing the weight back down and then focusing on my weak portion of the squat, because that is what I'm ultimately trying to do with this experiment, is Much trying better. to make strength improvements. Only doing three more reps working at the bottom and then moving on to front squats where I only did a total of five reps. Now if you think about it, five reps total, that's it? I mean, usually we do exercises consisting of sets with multiple reps, but I think because each rep was done slowly, increasing the time under 10, plus the added weight made this workout seem just as fatiguing if not more fatiguing than a normal workout with more reps. <laughs> Moving on to some slow eccentric lunges <sighs> and then trying to do some eccentric single leg weighted glute bridges which I actually found extremely uncomfortable and hard to really activate the targeted oh. muscle groups. My legs are like swollen they're not even pumped finishing up with something that I'm really weak at and I probably should have been working on for a while now. Oh, that needs work. Eccentric Nordic hamstring curls. So just doing the release motion, but even that I couldn't control all the way down. So I used a resistance band to help aid me, but even with that, it was still severely difficult and I couldn't seem to get past the 45 degree mark confidently. This is something I'm excited to work on and hopefully improve over the next several months. Whether it looks like I'm doing it wrong or right, I can really feel that in the hamstring. Thanks Eccentrics only for just making me really try this for once. Jeez. Oh man, I'm feeling this one right away. Oh. After taking another rest day, it was time for upper body once again. This time, I really wanted to bump the weight up to challenge my body to a whole new level. To warm up, starting with some eccentric extra range of motion push-ups on the parallel bars, but then moving over to the bench press. I set up the safety straps to catch the barbell right at the bottom of the movement, but to give me as much range as possible. Eccentrically controlling the weight down, working all the way up to 225 was actually no problem. This is more than I've had on the bench press in a very, very long time. Let's do this. And just as according to the theory, I was able to unrack and let down slowly way more weight than I was used to. So I had the safety straps, boys. After reviewing the footage, I can see where the point of failure was. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do another rep of that, but I'm gonna really concentrate controlling it through that range of failure right there. So I think that's where some serious strength progress is going to be made. Ugh. If it wasn't for the safety strap, I'd be screwed, man. Like, what if you even drop that off? Like, oh my gosh. 300 pounds used to always be a goal of mine on the bench press, but Never have been able to do it. So, you know what? I thought we'd load up 300 pounds on the bench press. One rep, it's going down. 
definitely not back up. An old goal that I never accomplished, being able to bench press 300 pounds. Well, ladies and gentlemen, maybe it's back on the table. Because for the first time in my life, doing this experiment, I was able to hold 300 pounds over my body weight, and even though I couldn't let it down super smoothly throughout the whole range, Oh my gosh. It gave me this confidence. Maybe I could eventually bench press 300 pounds if I put my mind to it. Maybe that's something I should try to achieve in future videos. Let me know. So I did notice at the heavier weights I was failing towards the bottom of my rep, and I wanted to work on that weak point, so I backed the weight down to 225 and really focused on that last little bit of the eccentric motion of the bench press to hopefully fix and build strength in that soft spot. Alright, and bumping it back up, but only... 10 pounds doing a zigzag set here. And then moving on to eccentric pull-ups where I started with just my body weight stepping up on the bench to get myself into the top position and eccentrically letting myself down slow and controlled and then adding some weight to increase the challenge on the eccentric motion and eventually just going to my 40 pound weight vest because it was more comfortable for this exercise. Three sets of eight underhand followed by three sets of five overhand slow and controlled eccentric pull-ups. From here, in an attempt to target the shoulders, doing five sets of five reps of slow and controlled eccentric pike push-ups with the weight vest. These were so much more challenging than I anticipated, failing on my fifth rep for the fourth and fifth set. I was expecting to do more exercises, but after just these few, I was so burnt out and my upper body was so fatigued, I was done. <sighs> Look at that shoulder pump though. I thought I was gonna do more exercises, but like I just, like I, I just, I can't do anymore. Gonna go shower up, get some nutrition in, rest up, probably take tomorrow off, and then continue on the eccentrics. Legs are sore, arms are sore, and even like the backside of my triceps in my arms actually kind of started to ache, and not just like a muscle soreness, but kind of more like a, a little bit more than that. So yeah, I'm gonna take today as a rest day. So my elbow on my left side was actually beginning to feel a little bit more than just the typical soreness. So I took an entire day off and then the next day just focusing once again on legs, giving the arms a whole nother day of rest. I was going to do this workout in the gym, but after reviewing the footage of the previous leg day, I wanted to make some improvements to the biomechanics of my squats. I'm actually not going to do the bulk of my workout here in the basement, but I am starting today with some eccentric squats. And the reason being, when I was reviewing the footage of the leg day that I just did a couple days ago, I was noticing that my eccentric motion of the squat, the tracking of it was just kind of off. Like my knees were kind of coming forward too soon and it just didn't look right. And I kind of wanted to improve on that right now before I jump into the bulk of the workout. The squat is something that I'm extremely weak on and I just want to improve it. So I need to, you know, work on it. Only going up to 220 right here with a few eccentric reps and I just am really working on kind of sitting a little bit more into it evening things out getting the joint tracking more on track rather than like doing too much forward or backwards or whatnot and um, yeah really feeling it more in the glutes now I think that was something I was lacking from the previous day but then the bulk of my workout is going to be at the gym where I am gonna hit up machines so yes, off to the gym where I started with some assisted eccentric partner hamstring curls. It was crazy how much stronger I felt during the eccentric motion of this movement compared to the concentric motion. In fact, I could have easily racked the entire machine. Regardless, it was one plate away and I was able to do three sets of 10 reps slow and controlled with relative ease. Now the same thing with the partner assisted eccentric quadricep extension. I felt so much stronger eccentrically. However, I backed the weight down just because I was a little bit sketched, putting all that leverage across the knee in a non-closed chain position. The last thing I wanted to do was get injured. At this point though, I was feeling very confident and strong. In fact, even including the squats in the beginning of this workout, everything was feeling like it was getting stronger at an exponential rate. Maybe just training eccentrics was actually working wonders. Afterwards, experimenting with just the eccentric portion of a box jump. So starting on the top of the box, jumping off, trying to absorb the force slowly, but not jumping back up. 
And from trying this out based on my experience, this seems like an exercise where the concentric motion is actually probably more important, at least for the intended purpose of building strength and coordination for explosive jumping. Afterwards, moving on to some eccentric only pistol squats, another relative weak spot for me. However, during this exercise, and in fact the entire workout, there was just this like connection or this confidence, this extra strength that I was already feeling that was perhaps developed just from the one eccentric leg workout from the prior day that was really leading me to feel significantly stronger overall. It was making me quite excited for the end of this experiment to be able to test my strength just to see how much I improved. Would I be super surprised? We'll find out shortly. Finishing this leg day up with some eccentric leg lifts, or I should say leg lowers, and then moving on to the next day where to my surprise, I wasn't feeling sore or tired at all from the leg workout, not even 24 hours ago. Knowing I only had a limited time left, I wanted to take advantage and fill in the blanks with these final days. So I started with eccentric front squats, working all the way up to 225, which would be the most I've ever had on a front squat, eccentrically trying to control it to the bottom, using the safety straps to catch the weight. Oh and then filling in the blank with incline press. Once again, because the reps were so limited with all the time it took to re-rack the weight for another rep, I really focused on time under tension and controlling the weight down. In fact, with all of these exercises, I only ended up doing three top sets consisting of one rep each. And then moving on to filling in the blanks with deadlifts. This to me felt like another one of those exercises where the concentric motion was more beneficial. In fact, just letting the deadlift down slowly was kind of sketchy feeling. Also undoing the weights and then repositioning the bar and reloading the weights was very time consuming for this one. <sighs> Man, I wish I had like a car jack. Not maxing out the deadlift, rather focusing on time under tension, and then moving on to the final exercise of this day, eccentric only handstand push-ups on the parallel bars with some extra range of motion. Doing three sets of five reps, once again working on slow and controlled time under tension. This really burned the shoulders. Now the very next day I thought I had it in me to do another fill in the blank day. However, the fatigue quickly hit me. And I think I finally felt that entire buildup of this entire experiment. So I cut the workout short and decided it was time to rest and recover to hopefully allow my body to repair itself and become fully adapted to this unique style of training so that when I would test my strength again, I would see massive improvements. Would this be the case? Let's find out. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the results. Oh yeah, that was weird. After 10 days of only training eccentrics super maximally, my max reps with 225 on the bench press increased by 150%. My max triple on squats increased by 22%. And my grip, in attempt to close the two, on the right hand did not look like much of a change. Keep it last little bit, just like, yeah. why? But on the left hand, I noticed I was significantly stronger. Now check this out, in the afters, aside from being one pound heavier and a little more tan, in my opinion, I look way denser. And I've got to be real, it looks like my muscles look bigger. Now hold on a second. When it comes to the lifts, these increases are relative to the test before the experiment. When it comes to my all-time maxes on these lifts, aside from the grip test, I still had a ways to go. However, from my experience in the past, going through seasons of losing strength and then trying to gain it back over and over again, I do have to say that by just training these super maximal eccentric sets, it felt like the strength came back a lot quicker than it would have in the past just training conventionally. There was also this sort of strength or confidence that I felt was gained in my joints over these 10 days that made them feel stronger and more secure with these heavier weights at a way faster rate than I have ever experienced in the past. Another thing I must note is the one pound increase. While I did try to keep my diet the same throughout this experiment, I was actually way hungrier and I may have eaten a little bit more calories leading to the weight increase and possibly having a positive effect on the strength increase. But once again, I do have to say regardless of the calorie surplus or not, 
the strength rate that it increased just seems faster than ever before in my experience. And for these reasons, going forward, I will definitely be using eccentrics in my training. I actually think if I keep this going, or even just train normally and add in more eccentrics, I may be able to blast through some serious all-time plateaus. And also, I am definitely going to take this concept into my next training endeavor, because it fits perfectly with intensity. That's right, I hear you in the comments, Mike Menser. I looked into to it and this one looks like a great training experiment so stay tuned if you want to see me approach that for 30 days if you have any other training suggestions i generally like to do experiments that can be done pretty much solo have a hypothesized positive benefit regarding health athleticism etc and obviously that would be interesting i hope you all enjoyed this video feel free to make fun of my absolutely abysmal squats i hope you have a great day peace i will see you in the next video